how do YouTube today? We're taking a look at the WWE Mattel Batista. I'm also going to use this opportunity to review the latest James Bond movie, Spectre. Let you guys know what I thought of the movie, hopefully without spoiling too much. Uh, Batista, of course, for those that have seen the trailer, know that he's uh, a villain in the film. He did a fantastic job, and I'll uh, run through what I thought of his performance as well. Okay, we'll start by quickly talking about Spectre. Honestly, it was one of my favorite James Bond movies. I think they did a really good job with this film. The villain is fantastic. I thought the stunts and effects and uh, the action sequences in the film were really well done. Just a really enjoyable movie to watch. There was no points where I was um, you know, thinking, man, I wish they had done this or that was crappy. Uh, throughout the whole movie it stayed pretty consistent and, and was really good uh, one thing I will say that I loved it had a lot of stuff that um, if you're a big fan of the series uh, which I am huge James Bond fan and you've uh, you know read the the books read some of the comic books that they've they've done read um, into the James Bond lure watched all the other movies they have a lot of great references to a lot of the stuff in there they really delved into James Bond's backstory, the character, and uh, you know his upbringing, all that sort of stuff. I thought it was fantastic. Just a, a really, really good film. I've seen there are some, you know, people saying it's like the worst Bond movie ever and things like that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what they're talking about, if I'm honest. Now, in terms of uh, Batista's role, he's fantastic. Basically, he's the uh, like the hired muscle. He's the you know assassin sent after Bond. Um, to basically do Spectre's bidding, really, really well done by Batista. Uh, sharp dressed in the film, but just absolutely brutal. No elegance, just uh, pure strength. Throws Bond around a fair bit. Uh, I won't spoil anything about their altercations or anything like that, but there's some great fight scenes, great chase scenes, just really awesome. I was, I was really impressed and uh, happy for Batista because I know... His most recent run in WWE, he got uh, criticized pretty badly. So for him to have gone on and at least done well in the movie movie scene, I think is good. In terms of this actual figure itself, uh, fans will recognize him from, I believe it was Payback or Extreme Rules 2014, the uh, Blue Teaster attire. I think it's interesting they chose to do this. I think it's kind of cool. But at the same time, uh, the accessories they've given him, uh, I don't recall him ever wearing, but, uh, you know, it's not that bad. In terms of packaging, comes in the standard Elite-style packaging, and at the bottom we've got a nice shot of Blue Tista. Okay, and taking a look at the back of the packaging, nice shot of Blue Tista on the back there. I'm not sure why he's dressed like that. I, I really don't know. Uh, it is from Payback 2014. Obviously, Batista from Washington, D.C., the Batista bomb, one of my favorite finishes of all time, former affiliations, Evolution, probably along with DX and the NWO, one of the greatest stables of all time. Debuted 2002, obviously, as uh, the Deacon. Six foot six, he's a big guy, and uh, even in Spectre, he's huge, actually. 290 pounds. Other figures in the set, we've got Roman Reigns, Junkyard Dog, X Pac, Cesaro, and Seth Rollins. Actually, pretty solid lineup of figures. So let's get Batista opened up and out of packaging. Okay, and here we have Blue Tista opened up and out of packaging. Just because he comes with the accessories on, I'll quickly run through those. Basically, he comes with uh, this... I don't know what the, the proper name for it is, but like director's hat and uh, a set of sunglasses as well. He comes with uh, this blue jacket, which is actually just a, a blue version of the jacket they released with the uh, Mattel Ryback character. I mean, kind of cool. I... As opposed to getting zero accessories, I think it's not bad. Um, at the same time, you know, he never wore this, so it um, seems a little bit unnecessary. But it could be worse. It does make him look like a, a bit of a tool. So uh, <laughs> I guess in that respect, they uh, they added to the figure. Now, it is obviously removable, so obviously the hat comes off as do the glasses. One thing I think is really funny is the uh, nice bald patch they've given Batista. <laughs> Poor guy, honestly, even uh, in figure form, uh, he cops it. So, 
yeah, kind of cool. I think they nailed the, the face scan. I think they did a good job with Batista. Okay, and here we've got Blue Tista opened up and out of packaging. Honestly, this is one of my favorite Elite figures, just because it's such a cool and well-detailed figure. Now, uh, obviously, I brought it forward so you guys can take a look at the face, but hopefully you can get a good idea of the detail on all the tattoos that this guy has. Uh, again, I have no clue why he decided to get so many tattoos. But if there is any sort of consolation, at least it makes for a pretty cool-looking figure. Now, the back of this guy looks... Awesome. I hope you can see that on camera. Uh, that is really, really well detailed. Probably the best tattoo work um, I think on any any figure I've come across. I think it's just really awesome. The amount of colors and, and detail that Mattel went into. So, uh, I mean, really nice, actually. One thing I like about this uh, Elite Batista is that they did release, uh, when he first returned, uh, just a, a standard Batista Elite figure, and the main reason to buy that figure that they, they marketed and promoted was the fact that it came with this detailed tattoo. So at least with the this later version of Batista, we get all the added accessories, plus that nice detail. Very cool indeed. Big fan of this guy. Now, in terms of articulation, he's got the standard elite articulation, which means ball-jointed head, ball-jointed arms, swivel in the bicep, bend at the elbow, swivel wrist. He's got the ab crunch, swivel waist, uh, swivel legs, swivel in the thigh, double bend at the knee, swivel in the boot, and then uh, swivel in the ankle. So, great range of articulation. And just for comparison, I've got Batista here with some of the other figures that they've released. Uh, on the left, we've got an older Mattel Batista, one of the first ones they released. And then we've got uh, when you returned initially as a good guy. Uh, on the back, you can see, obviously, I think they're all really cool figures. But the detail on the Elite is certainly much nicer than uh, the other figures they've released so far. And in terms of face sculpts, I guess you can see the evolution of Batista. All really awesome figures. I'm a huge fan of this particular Elite version of Batista. I think it looks fantastic just visually with the tattoos and everything. I think they nailed the face scan. Uh, I'm going to say it's the best face scan of Batista that they've done. Uh, this other one's not bad as well, but uh, I think this one's just uh, a slight bit nicer and it really uh, adds to the figure. No questions. If you're a Batista fan, this is the one you want to pick up. Really nice detail. Cool accessories as well. Even if you're not a big Batista fan, I think this is worth picking up just to have on display to see the nice detail on that back tattoo. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this review on the WWE Mattel Blue Tista.